In this lesson, we're going to work on taking a rate and converting that rate into a rate of different units. So we have 50 miles per hour, and we want to convert that to feet per second. So the first thing is we need to make sure that we write this uh, the set of units of miles per hour in a way that's helpful for our unit conversion factors. So the way we need to make sure we write this is don't write miles slash hour like it's written in the problem here, but write it as miles over hours, right? Because literally what 50 miles per hour means is 50 miles per one hour. And if it helps, you could go ahead and put um, one hour on bottom and extend this fraction bar if you want. But the thing to make sure of is that miles are on the top of a fraction, hours are on bottom of a fraction. And now our strategy is going to be to just focus on one unit at a time. So I'm going to ignore the hours for a moment. I'm not going to do anything with them. I'm not going to think about them. I'm just going to think about turning miles into feet. That's the only thing I'm going to worry about at first. So to do that, I know I'm going to need a unit conversion factor. And I go and look up what I know about miles and feet. And I remember that, well, maybe I don't remember. You don't have to memorize it. But we look up that 5,280 feet is equal to 1 mile. And because the miles are on top here and I want to get rid of them, I need a miles on bottom and the conversion factor so they cancel. So miles on bottom, feet on top, and I know there are 5,280 feet in one mile. So at this point, I have the unit of length completely taken care of. I have converted from miles to feet. Now that we've done that, we can focus on the hours, on the time. So uh, we'll need another conversion factor, at least one more. And let's think about, we want to go from hours to seconds. So let's write out what we know about um, time units and hours and seconds and so on. So we know, of course, that there are 60 minutes in one hour. And of course, we know there are 60 seconds in one minute. So we'll probably have to use both of these facts. So. I think the logical thing here is to first convert from hours to minutes. Now, so far, every time we've wanted to get rid of a particular unit, we put that unit in the bottom of the conversion factor. But understand the only reason we put it in the bottom, like right here, uh, we put miles in the bottom of the conversion factor, was because miles were on top um, of the original uh, the original rate, and we wanted to get rid of them. Well, now hours are on the bottom of this original rate, and we want to get rid of those hours. And so what we're going to do is understand that I better put hours on top of this conversion factor so that they cancel out. Because if hours were both on bottom, they wouldn't cancel with each other. So hours go on top, minutes go on bottom, and so we have one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Of course, that's not quite what we want, but it's getting us closer. Right? Minutes are closer to seconds than hours are. So we just need to do one more conversion factor to go from minutes to seconds. And since minutes are on bottom and I want to get rid of them, minutes go on top, seconds go on bottom. So there is one minute every 60 seconds. All right, so now we've got the units that we want. The only unit left on top is feet. The only unit left on bottom is seconds. So that's exactly what we want to have happen. Now we could, I suppose, multiply straight across 50 times 5,280 and 60 times 60 on bottom and then divide. But that's going to give us a division problem with huge numbers. So if you can easily see some things to cancel, go ahead and do that at this point. So for example, 50 ends in a 0, 60 ends in a 0, and remember if two numbers both end in a 0, they can both be divided by 10. So we'll just say 50 divided by 10 is 5, 60 divided by 10 is 6. And we can do the same trick here with uh, 5,280. So 
Divide that by 10, you get 528. Divide that by 10, you get, um, you get 6. And then the only other thing to look at here is, you know, 528, that's an even number, and 6 is an even number, so I could probably do some fairly easy canceling there. Uh, let me use a different color to really differentiate it. So let's take uh, 528 divided by 2. And just real quickly as we do that, we get 264. So cross that out, make that a 264, and then of course cross this 6 out and make a 3. And let's see here, we could do the same thing again, 264 is even, right? So um, let's divide that by 2. And here we get 132. So I can cross that out, 132, as long as I also divide the 6 here by 2. Um, now it actually turns out that you could even do more canceling than this, but um, I, I guess you know don't get too um, too worried about uh, reducing it 100% because when uh, we do the division process, uh, we'll be able to easily see how it reduces there as well. So um, as long as now you have it to a nice manageable um, number, especially on bottom. Notice now all I have on bottom is 3 times 3 is 9. Um, that's a pretty manageable thing to divide by. Um, you can feel free to stop the reducing process for now. Of course, ultimately, we always need our answers reduced. So I have um, a 9 on bottom, 3 times 3 is 9, and then 132 times 5 is going to give us 660. And that's of course feet per second. So let's now divide this. Now we understand if I divide and I get a whole number, that's great, feet per second. If I don't get a whole number, um, then we need to write it as a mixed number and, uh, and then you know, do any more reducing that would be necessary. But let's just see what happens here. 660 divided by 9. 9 goes into 66 seven times. Nine goes into 30 three times, and we have a remainder of three. Now, if this was a problem where they asked us to round to a certain place value, then at this point we would continue to divide, get a decimal answer, and, uh, and then round to the appropriate value. But because um, they did not give us rounding instructions, we can assume that the problem wants us to keep the answer exact. So let's just stop right here and understand that this means that 660 over 9 is equal to 73 and 3 ninths feet per second. And then the only other thing we need to do here is understand, okay, 3 ninths is not completely reduced. And so we'll just divide top and bottom by 3. And we'll end up with 73 and one third feet per second. So converting rates can be tricky, but remember the strategy is just convert one unit at a time, and uh, you know, and ignore the other while you do that. And uh, we'll do one more video right after this one. Um, that's also going to be a rate conversion to hopefully help you get pretty comfortable with this process.